I'm very nervous about this one. It's time to take the cassette deck out of my Sony La Scala S2 system and change the belt on it. First thing to do is get all of this separated out so I can work on it properly. I'm even more nervous now because I've undone the pack of belts and there's four in them. Uh, there's a story behind these belts, but I'm going to get into that later. First of all, let's get this undone. I'm doing this without the aid of a service manual uh, at the moment, but I might look it up if it gets complicated, especially with the four belts. So the story behind this, there's a video uh, in the description box and in a card up the top there about when I got this, um, this Sony system. It was quite expensive. It was quite expensive, but it was recommended to me by Tecmo. Um, it's about two years in the making, this system. Uh, I'd asked him in, one, in the comments on one of his videos what he would recommend for a cassette deck with auto, uh, auto bias on it, because I don't really, I'm not very confident with the auto, with the manual biasing and stuff when you're recording on cassettes. Anyway, he recommended it to me and I put in an eBay search and I really only wanted this part of the system because I've got other systems I can hook it up to. But one came up at a decent price and I bought it. And I checked before it arrived whether it had been serviced and he said he'd never had any problems with it. And it did actually play quite well. Um, and I, I was doing a test recording of it. Sometimes side B on existing cassettes wouldn't be so good. And I did a test recording on it and it actually chewed up the tape on side B. But I, I don't think it's the pinch roller uh, that's sticky for the capstan. So um, then I figured out that it wasn't playing at a consistent speed either. So I, I realised at, at that point that I would need to get a replacement belt. I've had this apart before, I think, but I can't remember what I had to do. Oh, there we go, the sides come off. So the sides lift off, I think. Oh, there we go. They angle up and lift off. Anyway, we've got so many videos now, I can't remember what I've done. Let's put those to one side. And now this lid should come off quite easily. Okay, so let's readjust the camera. Just give you a little look around. While I'm doing that, I'll explain that uh, it's it was a long time since um, Techmoan recommended this to me, and I've had this now for a, a good few months as well, and I'm really pleased with it, but um, I do need to replace the belt, because the main reason for me getting this was to be able to do good quality recordings on cassettes and then listen to them on my Walkman and various other systems. So there's one of the belts there. So hopefully the two of the belts I've got are um, related to the mechanism going in and out. And if it's easy, I might as well replace those as well. It does look easy. So yeah, the situation with the belts is one of my favorite suppliers um, since, since we came out of Europe, I've not been able to order, I've not wanted to order belts from Europe because when they arrive, I might have to pay a load of import duties and I have to pay VAT. And if you have to pay that, then you have to pay the courier company about eight or nine pounds as well, just to handle the tax that's got to go off to the government. So it makes the belts very expensive. And I couldn't find any belts for this particular unit. So what I did was I, I, contacted one of my favorite suppliers which has got a which is a UK supplier and I said to them have you got any belts for this unit and they said um, I said to them you haven't got them on your website or on Amazon or on eBay and um, and they said to me now they didn't know I had a, a YouTube channel and they said to me we've got belts which are th they think are the right size but they haven't been able to test them because they haven't got one of these units and they were prepared to send the belts to me for free so I could test them and then let them know whether they're the right belts. And I've had these belts for nearly two months and not had the time to get this out because I need a full day. If it goes wrong, I need to be able to get it right. So I don't know how long it's going to take. So anyway, I said I'd um, 
let them know how the belts go and then if these are the right size belts then they can sell them on their site knowing that they fit. Okay I've had to open the window because it's so hot today and I can't work when I'm too hot. So what I'm nervous about here, what I'm even more nervous about here, there's a screw there and there's a screw there and they're the only screws I can see that might be holding it in but I can't even see the belts but I can see the motor down at the back there. So let's have a look at the bottom of the unit. So there's two you can't see. Hang on one second. So those two I think are those other screws. And there's another one there. So I think these are the screws and there's like a, uh, like a location post there to get uh, the unit out. Now I wonder whether I need to take the front of the unit off like this. So I might have a... oh there's, there's one of those as well, don't know what that's for. I might have to have a sneaky look. Oh that's just for cable, uh, cable um, tidy. I might have to have a sneaky look and see if I've got... I can get the service manual for this so I know what I'm doing because it's a expense, the whole bit of kit I think was £260 or £280 or something. And I only wanted it really for the cassette deck. So I really don't want to mess, make a mess of this because uh, it's going to be expensive to replace. So I'll be back after doing a bit of research. Okay, so I've got the service manual and it gives me diagrams for it and explains, but it doesn't explain really how to take it apart. Uh, so it tells me where the screws are. So I might as well get started on that then. Looks like I'm going to have to remove the front panel for it first. But as you can see here, there's no clear instructions on how to remove it. Um, rotate gear of the arrow. <laughs> rotate gear of the arrow. Yeah, I don't think this is written by someone who, who's got English as their first language. Uh, not, uh, not really very helpful. So let's uh, see what we can do. Right, so this is the front of the unit here. And um, I'm just going to undo these screws and see whether it gives me any better access. You know, if, the, if this whole thing comes out, then that's great. If it doesn't, then I'll have to take the front panel off. benefits of a screwdriver with magnetic head. That's a bit better, I might as well make use of the lights that I bought. And I can't see the other screw on this side, so it's loose but I can feel that moving there, which is the door, let me show you. That's the front of the door, so I think I'm going to have to remove that, but I don't know how. So, oh hang on. Yeah, I just want to be super careful. So I think I'm going to remove the front panel. Although there's, if I remove the front panel, then I've got to undo this ribbon cable. And if I break the ribbon cable, that's it, it's dead. Yes, yeah, so this is interesting. So I'm lifting it up. It's obviously free at the back. And it does say claws on there. So I wonder whether this just slides straight out. That seems to be the pivot point. So let's give it, let's lift it and give it a bit of a wiggle and see what happens. Nothing. Okay, time to take the screws out and get the front panel off. They're quite tight, these screws. Maybe I should be using a bigger screw bit. Let's just check they're the same size as the other ones. Because if they are, I don't have to worry about keeping them in the right order. Nope, they're different, so... Okay, so the ones I've already taken out have a flat end on them. So let's get these organised in my box here. So the ones at the top are the ones that I took out first. The ones in the next row are the screws that go in there. And the ones in the third row are the case screws, which are different. They're, they're, sorry, the front panel screws. 
which are different. I'm going to get a different screwdriver. Back to this one, it's a bigger size and a bit more beefy. Although, oh, there we go. Screws are really tight, and I don't want to round them off, obviously. Yeah, definitely got a uh, spike on the end. Okay, so I've now been able to move this a little bit. I think it's just clipped itself back in again. There we go. And you see that is now moving free of this. So this panel is not holding this in place. So what the hell's holding this then? So this unit appears to be free, but it's pivoting on this point here. Ah, there's the claw. Right, okay. Let me just zoom in a bit, digital zoom. Right, see that claw there? Let's turn the light on. Okay, so that claw there is what's holding the mechanism in. So I've got to go that way. There's a screw. That's what's holding it in. So it does say there's five screws, but five screws for the for this panel. For this panel at the front. Ah, there's another screw there, but I don't that could be it as well. So let's have a quick look. Ah, yeah, there it is. So there's the screw post. Can you see it? Let's point with that. That is the screw post there. Okay, so we've got two more screws here, one there and one there. And they are the other two screws that are holding the cassette mech in there. What I'm worried though is as I undo these two screws, the mechanism is going to fall out underneath the unit. So let me just reposition so it's sideways. As usual, it's difficult to do the shooting and the actual work itself. So there's the cassette mechanism. I'm just going to support it with my hand while I undo the two screws, which hopefully you can still see. Well, you can't see the screws, but you can see what I'm doing. I can't see the screws either, which makes it much more difficult. There we go, that's one. That's falling down there. Where's my magnetic bit? Okay, I'll recover that in a minute. And these screws do have a reassuring click when they first start turning. There you go, that sort of clack signifies I think that they've never been taken out which is good news because this unit's probably about 25 years old or maybe more so if the belt hasn't been replaced for 25 years hopefully when I replace it it won't need doing for another 25 years okay fingers crossed Ooh, it's moved I was still it's still pivoting around that area there Yep, there's another claw in there. I'll show you that. Right down there. Don't know whether you can see it. But that's the screw we've undone, so it should come out. With a bit of gentle persuasion. Ah, oh, there it is. A little bit of a wobble. There's something else holding it in. And I've got a funny feeling it is this. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. As I lift up the mech and try and slide it backwards, this is getting stuck. There you go, you can see a bit better now. So it's, this cannot go that way. But I don't know how to take it off. So I wonder if I could push this out. Oh, something's happened there. I want the door open basically, but I don't know how to do it. 
Let's try with the pulley. Ooh, look at that. So I'm just moving the pulley where the uh, wheel is, uh, where the belt is. Now I'm feeling, I wonder if there's a screw under there. I think there's a screw under there. Ooh. Oh God, I forgot about that screw. Let's put that in my tray. Okay, so there it is, there's two screws, one there you can't see, but one there you can see, which will take this front part off, hopefully. So let's have a go at that. That's odd because that front plate has come off. I don't think it's very big. So I'm not sure whether that's going to help. Okay, so I think I figured it out. Let's get my torch in here. Oh, you can't quite see it right. There you go. So what we're looking at now is this part here. There's a tiny little clip there, which I think I can just push back and then slide this off. So let's try that. So we're moving this bit up. There you go. Got it. Oop. So that's how that comes off. It slides off that way on a couple of clips. And now, keep our fingers crossed. Right. Now that goes in there like that. It's caught on something again. There we go. Now there must be some sort of electrical connection here somewhere. Oh, it's right around the other side. Hang on. Ah, oh, so here it is. Let's zoom in a bit, I think. So this is all the connections for this. You know, they all run around here. And it's tied there, and there's that. And I wonder whether I can... I don't want to tape all these out because these wires are old and probably a bit brittle. So I don't really want to unplug those. That's just an earth lead, so that's not connected anywhere. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a bit of space. Now, hopefully, oh no, we've got this here as well. No, we don't look at this at all. Okay, because these are very stiff. These ribbon cables are very stiff. So what I think I'm going to have to do is take this ribbon cable out. But I don't want to just yank it there, because if it comes unsoldered, it's a much bigger job. So let's get myself different bit on my screwdriver. Let's have that one. I'm just going to try and lever this up a little bit. Let's get right in there if we can. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. Did that move? Can I get my dainty little fingers in there to just grab the side of that and pull it out? I don't think I can. As I'm doing this, I've got my head right near my phone. And I can feel that it's getting very hot. So I'm going to take a break from filming in a minute. And give myself and my phone a chance to cool down. Okay, option two. I think I might do more damage to that cable if I took it out. Oh, but it won't stretch around now. Oh, that'll do. That'll do. Whew. Okay, time for a break. Right. So, I've had a call down and so has my phone. So let's have a look at these belts. 
So I guess this is the motor here. We've got one belt that comes off around the bottom of this pulley, of this um, flywheel if you like. And yeah, it just goes sort of runs around there. And then off the top of this one, we've got a belt that goes around the top of this one. And back here and Just on the top of this one, it has got another belt on this one. And that goes back around there. And then we've got another belt on the bottom of this pulley that goes under here and back around here. So that was going to be difficult to take out. And then of course the on the other side of this, just down here, we've got the um, eject um, the eject belt as well. So let's have a look. God. Oh, I'm just going to wash my hands because my hands might be a little bit greasy and I don't want to get grease on the new belt, so I'll be right back. I thought we had a handheld camera for a minute so you can have a better look at these belts. So there's the, I think this is the motor here. So that belt comes around the bottom of this one here. And then just back onto there. Then on the top of this one. We've got a belt that comes off here. Let's see if I can get the focus a bit better there. But it comes off of here and just touches this one, just for this little arc here. And then goes around the top of this one. Yep, top of this one. And then back around there. And then on the bottom of this one, we've got another belt which goes around this one here, so as I spin that, you'll be able to see that move in there. It's quite complicated. There's square belts, and they don't, they seem to fit in the grooves sort of corner first, if you see what I mean. They don't run flat on those. So, oh, look at that, that's interesting. So, if I move that, these other ones don't move. So, it's quite possible with three belts on there that one of them is a bit old. Let's have a little fiddle. That one's tight. That one's tight. They fit all right, you know, but in for a penny, in for a pound, eh? Let's get them, let's get them changed over. So I'm still quite nervous about this because if this doesn't work, then I've got to take it all to pieces again, and try and get it sorted out. And I'm not even sure whether these belts are the right ones. So one of these will be the belt that goes on the side, which I can't quite see right now, but let's see if they're the same size. No, they're slightly different sizes, I think. And one of these is flat and one of these is square, so they're different ones as well. So that's going to be easier. Oh, you can see a bit better there, look. So let's, oh my god, all right, here we go. So first one, I'm going to take this one off the top here. Let's see how stretchy that is. What does it feel very stretchy at all? And I think that one, the one in my right hand is the one I'm replacing. God, I can't get muddled up now. Okay, so the original belt, or the one that was in the unit, I don't know whether it is original, but that one is quite obviously a little bit older because it's slightly misshapen. So I'm going to try and measure this, the width of it, with this. Also, it's a bit twisted. One point three one. That's millimetres, by the way. Yeah, 1.47. That's the problem we're living in an urban area. There's lots of noise outside. So this is the original belt. I'm going to put that on the left-hand side. It's the first one I took off, so it goes at the top. This is going to be the replacement, so I'm going to put that there, which is very slightly thicker. But that one is definitely slightly misshapen. 
and uh, but they appear to be about the same size so let's get back to our unit so I suppose the next one we can take off is this one that one's much thicker and that's the flat one Yeah, they feel the same width. And yeah, that's the one on the inside is the uh, is the new one. And it's slightly smaller than this one. Okay, so let's go back here again. And this one could be difficult to get out. So let's zoom in. Someone suggested putting tape, putting tape on this here when you're fitting the new one. Actually, I don't like the look of that. It's going to disappear under there. So let's get this off here. I think. Oh no! Bear with me. Okay, so I reversed the angle that you're looking at it on uh, but I'm still so I am this way and this belt has now slipped under this no biggie but it's also I can't get it off can you see that that is in the way that's <coughs> now that's a bit of felt I think I can't quite see what's going on here so there's plastic just here there's plastic just there I don't know what it's for, and this little bit of felt is stuck to the circuit board. So is it just as, I'm not sure, I'm just wondering whether it's just a bit of sticky to hold this peg, this circuit board, down onto the, um, onto the black plastic peg there. So I'm tempted to take this circuit board out, off, which is what I'm going to do. I'm not even sure you can see what I'm doing here. Let me see whether you can see it, yep, just about. Okay, so here and here and here and here and here are three little sort of push clips and then you've got the two pegs here and here that one's numbered up with one now this isn't in the service menu it doesn't tell you what to do and there's clips here as no this solder point no they're clips as well so this is clipped in here 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 and here here and they might be brittle so what I think I might just do is see if I can lift this little bit of foam up here it's like foam with an adhesive side on it I don't want to break it There we go. So I'm not even sure you can see this. But now that's like that. Can I angle this up and get the belt out? Yep, there we go. Unfortunately, the belt is now the wrong side of the um, pulley. So I'm going to move the camera back around this side. There we go. So the belt is now underneath the pulley. So I've got to get it around the top of the pulley. Somehow.
Okay, time for some tape. And I've got to hope that this tape doesn't also get stuck underneath the roller. Bingo. Now I think this is actually a clutch. See that spring there? So I think this is a clutch mechanism. Okay, old belt, new belt. And they do look a bit fatter. These new belts look a bit fatter than these. But who's to say that these belts aren't the ones that came originally with the unit? Somebody might have replaced these at some point. And it is very slightly bigger. So the, the old one's slightly bigger and slightly thinner. So I wonder if it's stretched and that's why it's slightly thinner. So we've got old belt, new belt on both sides. And the only other belt we've got left is the one for the eject mechanism, which I will deal with later on. So I think it's time now to get these all put back in. And hopefully I've got enough video footage to remind me which one goes on which pulley because I've forgotten already. So let's get the new one from here and see if we can get that around here. Where's my tape? I'm just wondering if there's a simpler way of me doing this. Yeah, this is very fiddly. Okay, I've put the, this is very difficult. I've been doing this for about 15 minutes now, trying to get this belt back on. Okay, let's take the belt all the way back out again. There we go, so it's underneath the peg, that is, underneath this part of the circuit board there's a peg. And the belt needs to go around that, so, and this goes, sort of, that's, that's why I had to undo the screws. So let's see if we can situate the belt inside the groove. There we go, so it's in the, oh, it was in the groove. Here we go. Now I'm going to hold it in the groove with the screwdriver and then see if we can get it just to feed its way under there. Okay, that's interesting. So now the, because it's such a tight fit between the pulley and the circuit board, it's now friction is holding it, holding it and pulling it around here. All I've got to do is keep it in the groove, I think. And there'll be somebody out there shouting at the screen right now, you're an idiot, you need to do it this way. Well, don't just shout, leave a message in the comments. I think my local neighbours 
dog thinks he knows how to do it. No, it's not going in, is it? Right. Is this where that bit of tape's going to come in handy? Why Joe? I think we've done it. That was very hard work. Now then, the belt has got little bits of dust and stuff all over it now, so I'm not sure I can clean that up. And the belt sits in there at a funny angle. Time to take a break. Okay, this is literally giving me a headache, this one. So, right, this one here, this is the flat belt. Goes on, oh, hang on a second. No, it's fine, I thought I saw a default in, a, a, a defects in the belt then. So this one I think goes around the bottom of this one here. You know what, this could be a last ever belt replacement. I'm sick of doing this one, this one's a tricky one. But it'll be worth it in the end, I tell you. That should go on the bottom of that, I think. Yeah, that looks right. A little bit of grease on the belt there. And then finally, this one goes on the top of this belt, on top of this pulley, rather. God. Okay, so. I am not going to swear. Oh, I haven't put a bit of tape back on, so I'm going to push that bit of tape back on there. And then that one goes around here. Hopefully. Under there. Right, how does that look? Okay, so that's that lot done. And now I might as well change the um, loading tray belt. So to do that, I've got to reposition this in here because the loading tray belt is on that side. So let's have a go at doing that. I'm really sorry about that. Either my camera, my phone overheated and didn't shoot that last piece of footage um, or I didn't press record. Right, so let's get cracking, putting this all back together again. We've got two little screws that go in the circuit board. Where's that one gone? There it is. Oh, were they different sizes? No, nope, both the same size, so let's get those back in there then. The tape's still stuck down, it doesn't look it, does it? So let's stick that down. Now, hang on one second. Is that tape, am I recording? Yeah. Let's get you closer in on this. That tape is rubbing against that uh, belt there. Put the screen before I forget. 
So I'm just going to go back and check that footage to make sure that belt was actually rubbing against there before. So yes indeed, this belt was very close to this felt pad here and it looks as if it actually makes contact with it. So hopefully it's all going to work when I put it back in. So now what I need to do is flip this over, let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. There we go. I'll carefully flip this over. Just thinking I've got anything else to do. Feed that in there. There we go. Let's tidy up the cables. Can't quite remember how they went in there, but it'd be better if these cables were underneath, I think. Underneath this circuit board underneath this attachment here. Put that in there, hold those in there like that. So how are we doing? We're still in shot. Looks like it. So let's spin it round and get these two screws in here. Okay, I, I was nervous and I was right to be nervous because this has been a right pain in the uh, butt to get sorted out. This unit, this part now has been back in uh, twice and I would take it back out twice because it wasn't seated correctly. First time I didn't have the lug, the claw situated under there. So I took the screws out and let me show you. I'd left the three screws in the fascia the second time because I didn't think I need to get the front panel off. But these um, plastic lugs here wouldn't situate in the base and they are what locate this properly the back end of this so if you're doing one of these in the future what you do have to do you do have to remove these through screw these three screws from the that hold the front panel on but you don't need to take the front panel off you just need to loosen it a little bit so this unit can slide in properly and locate properly there and then I guess they just lock, I think they're already locked back in. Yeah, there we go. So they just lock back in like that. So that's the way to do it. Now, to get the whole thing screwed back in again, I've got to make sure I put the right screws in the right places. We've got the two screws and the earthing strip here, which need to be done. And I'll just do those because they hold the mechanism in a little bit, a little bit for you when you're turning the unit back upside down. So I'm screwing those in, see if I can get it situated. There we go. There we go, that's better. So you can back the thread off a little bit to make sure it goes in back in the uh, thread properly. So you back the screw off by unscrewing it. I'll show you again on this one. So you locate it in the hole, you back it off till it clicks. And then that's more likely to have the threads lined up so you don't cross thread it. That's nice and tight, yep. And then we're gonna hard to get it all into shot in one go, so let's just angle this up a little bit. There we go. And then we've got the other two which hold the um, the mechanism in are in here. Hard for me to see around the camera. In fact, I can't see, so I have to go down here. I don't think you can see it either properly, but the screw is in there. Now this one at the bottom. And finally, Hopefully, finally, the three screws that hold the fascia on there, they're the ones with the pointed ends on them. Okay, they're in. And now, I'm just going to twist the um, flywheel for the eject mechanism out. So that can come out. It's not a flywheel, it's a pulley. 
I've got to try and remember how to put this back in now. So that was screwed in, wasn't it? So I think this just clipped on. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, sorry, I'll get back in shot. See these little triangle sort of wedges? They slide in now, so it goes in like this at the top. And they locate somehow. There we go. Something doesn't feel right there. That's better. So they snap on like that. Then that goes on. Can you still see? Yeah, you can still see. That slides on like that. Now we've got two more screws to go in here. So they screw in at the bottom and at the top. Okay, so hopefully we haven't got any screws left over. And hopefully the eject mechanism goes open and closed properly. Doesn't get caught. Perfect. So let's have a look at that then. Let's get it set up and plug it into power and I'll be back in a tick. Okay, this truly has been an ordeal today, but hopefully we're getting there. I've connected it all up now with the other half of the system, with the lid off, getting it all connected up. I had to look back at my old video to find out what, uh, what I had to do. So, Let's have a look at the eject mechanism now, so let's, hopefully it doesn't go bang. Oh look at that, isn't that nice? Let's find my demo tape. Oh, there it is. Which hasn't been rewound on a naughty boy. Find my remote, there it is, for the volume. Now this is royalty, this is a copyright free music from the YouTube library, YouTube uh, creators library. And let's play and see what happens. There we go. So that's working all right. Let's make sure it goes the other way as well. Oh yeah, side B is blank on this one. Ah, oh, brilliant, so that's all working. Let's show you the uh, side part there. Now I don't see the point of doing any speed test because I think these belts need to be run in a little bit. They'll be a bit tight at the moment. So I'm just gonna um, call it a day for now, do up the case on this and put the sides back on and uh, and then just give it a good test and then eventually what I'll have is this button here was the reason I bought this whole system because it's auto calibration so I'll have a little play with that figure out how it works and then we'll see whether having a, a cassette tape um, a deck calibrated to the tape is going to give us better sound quality so there it is in all its glory. Let's see if we can skip through to the next track. There we go. Auto music search. So let's turn that down. I will be giving that a good test. I haven't adjusted the speed because the belts are brand new. So I might um, check the speed at a later date and make sure that's adjusted properly. Um, just check if you think you're subscribed, please make sure you are actually subscribed because it makes a big difference to my channel. And um, 
on screen now you'll be able to see a video that YouTube thinks you might find interesting so why don't you watch another video thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video oh my god it just continues to go from bad to worse this video